Welcome channel and thanks very much for joining me. Today I'm going to show how I created this background for part 2 of Painter on Safari. First of all, as with everything, I start out on paper and pencil and I sketched it out and then I've pulled it into, I'm using Krita here. You could use Photoshop or whatever painting software you have. I do like Krita. Then what I'm doing here is just blocking out all the major shapes. I've dropped the sketch to the background and on a new layer, I'm just putting in all the basic shapes and getting rid of all the white on the screen. Here I'm starting to break it up into layers, grass in a layer, I'm putting the road in a layer, the rocks will be in their own layer, far distance in this background will be in its own layer. I like using layers when I, when I paint, it gives me more control, so yeah that, that's what I'm doing. up the grass. I'm using a multi-pronged paintbrush in, in Krita here for the grass and just varying the size and opacity. Also varying the colors and tone of the, of the grass so that it's looking more natural. Starting to block out the rocks here. layer. This is a bit of artistic license because here in Africa the water really isn't that blue in the rivers. It's, it's more green and uh, muddy in, in a lot of the rivers but I want this specific scene to have a nice vibrant color to it and there's going to be a lot of reflecting in the scene so that's, that's the idea of the water. All the animals and the action, the paint etc is going to be reflected off this water. So we'll do a bit of reflection on the actual background painting later but a lot of the reflection will be done in the animation. Here I'm working up the rocks and personally this, this was like therapy to me, I love uh, I love this part of it. If you ever have stressed and you need to just relax painting something, I can definitely recommend painting something like rocks. I think it's because it's pretty limited in the tones, the colors you use, and um, it's just starting with big shapes, the planes of the rocks, the way they catch the light, starting off big and then just breaking them down into smaller and smaller parts and then adding the details. Very therapeutic, very fun. So here I'm just adding some shadows and lights to the rocks. Very important to assess early on where your light source is coming from. In this case it's coming from the left, so it's left to right, so that makes drawing these shapes a whole lot easier. Obviously the light side is left, shadows on the right, so you can pretty much relax and, and just draw them naturally. I'm adding a lot of detail here, the cracks in the rocks, shadows etc. Trying to break them up and make them interesting.
Then I get into adding the reflections to this to this river. How I do that is by taking a screenshot of the image as it is. As I say, it's in many layers, so I just screenshot it and dump it as a as a new layer, and then pick the specific part that I'm wanting to reflect. So I'm doing it rock by rock. Inverse select and then rub out or erase all the background around it so that I'm left with just the shape, in this case the rock. And then I take the opacity on that down to about 50% and position it in place and it, it makes a very good reflection. So I do that with the bridge, same thing, do it to all the rocks. With the bridge I used a perspective, I dragged out the corners to give it a, more of a perspective. And when you're putting these reflections down, remember to rub out the parts where the foreground will be in front of that reflection, which I'm doing. Then I created some reeds and some lilies, etc. Brought them in and copied them and just placed them around the place, reversed them and, and changed their shape, stretched and added some details so that they're not all looking the same. And then did the same on the reflection for them as well. So I copied them and um, pasted them down, took the opacity down to 50 and just positioned the reflections, rubbed out parts of the reflections that needed to be rubbed out. So all the reeds had their own little reflections. Here I'm working on the road. I just put a basic brown down earlier and now I'm coming and stressing the road, putting the where the tire tracks will be of all the traffic going down that road, scuffing it up so it's looking quite rough and like a road wood. Then I start putting in some bushes and smaller trees around the scene. The cool thing with some of these brushes is that it makes making leaves very easy. I'm using a brush here that I use often to make the leaves and the important thing is just to make them in varying shades, varying tones and, and colors so that you get that effect of depth. Then I added shadows, which I just painted over again on a separate layer. I just painted over a brown and then knocked back the opacity so that it was more translucent and then scuffed it up where I needed to and rubbed it out so that it didn't have sharp or solid lines. So it was more natural and I dropped the shadow around, around the scene. And then finally I needed to put in the far background and I wanted to do that on a separate layer so I screenshot the forward part that I just worked on and, and cut out the background just so that I could use that as a reference and worked on the far background on its own layer so it will be totally separate from the background that we created earlier. Here I'm just putting some a bush line in the back, I'm dropping some of these trees in, breaking up the background, dropping the colours back because you always want your foreground colours to be stronger than the background so you get that effect that light gives you when objects are in the distance. I 
Then I brought in a cloud layer that I'd made on an earlier scene and dropped it in with the with the background and worked up a hazy, distant, atmospheric layer so that it all faded off into the distance. And here is the final result when I put them together as a composite. Once again, if you haven't subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Also, what's new is I've started sending out a regular email showing what's going on at James Whitelaw Animation. The link is in my description here with all the other links. Click on it, and if you want to add your name to the email list, you'll become part of that group. And that's about it for now. So check out the course, click the links on the description, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Add your email address to the email list if you want to become part of that group. And otherwise, thanks very much for once again joining my channel. All the best. Bye.